So here I have an interesting uh, little app. As you can see, it's just the Chinook uh, database that I have created a backend for, and then I have uh, generated a front end. Uh, however, uh, I want to uh, illustrate uh, something really cool with uh, Ista Magic Cloud, which is that if I log out now, and then I refresh, and then I log in with a different root uh, user, that's called uh, test1. Then uh, all of a sudden, uh, you see I have access to a significantly smaller amounts of uh, components. And if I go into the individual components, for instance, if I choose uh, invoice line here or media type, you see I don't have the delete icon. If I go back to invoice line, I can delete items. If I go to media type, I cannot delete items. If I expand one of my items in media type, you see I can edit it. But if I go to invoice line and I expand that item, I cannot edit the item. If I go to, if you watch carefully this plus button here, I can cre create a new invoice line here, but if I go to Gendra, I don't have a plus button. So what's happening here? Uh, let me emphasize again, if I now log out and I refresh and I log in with my other guy, uh, then you will see that all of a sudden I have access to everything and I can do everything. So what's happening here? Well, in order to understand that, we need to go to um, my Hub account, then we need to, um, Go to Cloudlets, then we need to open up our backend Cloudlets. And I'm now inside of the backend Cloudlet that uh, contains the web API for this thing. So let's go and have a look at uh, the uh, uh, Hyperlander files in HyperID uh, modules, Chinook. And if we look at uh, albums.count here, you see test1 uh, has access to invoking this endpoint. If I go to uh, something like uh, customer.get.hl, uh, you see my user test1 does not have access. This is test2, right, not test1. So if, if I'm test1 user now inside of my uh, front end, which I can easily do, then uh, and now I need to refresh because of the Angular uh, uh, guard. Uh, now this is customer.get.hl and I don't have access to customer here in my menu item whatsoever. Uh, why? Because the front end actually dynamically determines if uh, you have access to an endpoint or not. So if I now modify this to test one, I save it. Then I uh, find um, customer count .get, modify it and I save it. Then I need to flush my um, server side uh, cache that I can do here in management. Uh, or at least delete that one uh, endpoint, uh, that one uh, server-side cache. If I now uh, do F12, I choose network tab and I disable cache, then hopefully uh, what I want to illustrate is going to show up here. And ta-da, here is my customer front-end module. So now I can read items here, but I cannot edit them, right? If I now go back to my uh, HyperID thing here, I find uh, HyperID, I, Expand modules, Chinook, and I find a customer post, right? Now, if I change this one to test one, I save it. Then I go to my cache here. I flush my endpoints, and then I go back to my front end. Now, as you can see, there's no plus button here in the top right corner. However, if I do the same exercise once more, ta-da, I have a plus button. So the front end actually dynamically determines what HTTP web API endpoints, your currently authenticated user is authorized to invoking. And then dynamically builds the UI accordingly. Now, if you want to do this during the credification process, then you can do so when you go into tools, you go into CRUD generator and you choose your database, Chinook. And this was actually what I did. Then I went through one table at the time and actually explicitly modified the authorization parks down here, add the test one, comma, test two, et cetera, et cetera. And then when I'm credifying uh, this particular table and or all tables, then automatically magic associate these uh, roles with the invocation of that particular endpoint as you are generating your front end later, then magic will 
generate a front end that uh, initially downloads the authorization requirements for every single endpoint. And in fact, I can show that now. If I go here now, I uh, empty my uh, network tab and I do control R. And then if I look at endpoints here now and preview, you will see, uh, oops, let's uh, find the correct one. You will see that actually magic returns every single endpoint in the system and more importantly, it's authorization requirements. And actually the front end only renders components that are first of all, obviously CRUD type of components. Secondly, endpoints that I'm legally allowed to invoke. However, even after you have crudified, you can also go into Hyper ID and you can actually modify this as you see fit. If I go to album shell now, what you're looking at here at line 18 of .ticket.verify, it's basically a common separated list of every single role in my particular backend that are legally allowed to invoke this endpoint, which again, of course, propagates to the front end generator and the front end, uh, allowing me to actually have 100% fine-tuned control over who are allowed to do what and what they're allowed to see in the front end. And of course, what I actually did was that I went uh, to, to create a test one role, which obviously doesn't exist in the system by default, was that I went to management, I opened up users and roles, then I created my test one role here by clicking the plus. I can create any role I want to here, test two, and then I can uh, create new users, test two, test two, and then I can associate that user with uh, any roles I want to by expanding it and clicking this guy and add to role. And then I have a list of all my roles here. So anyways, uh, that was it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.